Welcome to Trek Fab. I am Fab. We are at the Sydney Opera House recording this introduction in the middle of the night at like two in the morning. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It's cold. It's very cold. Time and again, season one, episode four, uh, which is moderately confusing because of Amazon and Paramount and all of that crap. Uh, we are doing a. Why did you have to fart? <laughs> No, it's not funny. It's just disgusting. All the I got time. nervous. I got nervous. It just, no, I'm being serious. It just smells of rank. I'm sorry. Like, I, you say you clean your... It's not going in. It might go. You know, I don't know. Well, do we want to talk about that time that your penis got caught in that thing? What? <laughs> when? You mean my zipper when I was like seven? <laughs> that you didn't know about? It's why I didn't wear jeans till I was 14? No, you told me about it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're talking about time and again, which is a time travel episode after an episode with some time travel in it anyway. Uh, which was weird to me. Um, also, there's also like there's a lot of like it's it's what three stories in, and just weirdly like oh they're in a new quadrant and they're on a humanoid planet. Yeah, Neelix doesn't know where any of this is. Yeah, he doesn't know shit. So it starts off in the episode that they res- they get a signal of all of this this explosion and they go to investigate this planet. It's destroyed. Neelix has no idea what's going on with this planet. He doesn't know who it is, what it is, anything like that. They go down to the planet to measure the stuff. Uh, Paris sees. Hold up, before all that, Kess wakes up in a night sweat. Yes, Kess wakes up in a night sweat. And last week we discussed how she wasn't like Deanna Troy. This week apparently she is like Deanna Troy. She's exactly Deanna <laughs> Troy. <Yeah. It's> like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, that ruins my point from last week. Um, she wakes up from a night sweat. Anyway, they go to this planet. There's been an explosion of certain particles. They think it's the energy that supplied the entire place. Tom Paris starts to see visions of the civilization uh, before no, the explosions. Visions. They're not well, visions. He's, what he's seeing, he, he's like stepping into like time portals or something. Well, yeah, like he like, like glimpsed into like fractures. Yeah. fractures the person time. who's seeing shit is Cass. Yeah, Cass is like full on seeing shit, but that's more for later. Uh, Janeway and Paris get sucked into one of these time fractures and end up in the city before the explosion. A kid sees them, gets freaked the fuck out, but no one believes him because he's an annoying child. Yeah, well, understandably, he would be freaked out by it because, like, these two random people just appeared out of fucking thin air. Like, that would blow my fucking mind. What I find funny is the kid's the only one that noticed yeah, and it was a crown, very, very a cool area. Shop front or something. Like, um, we should mention that when they're in the dilapidated city, they do find a time piece of which is stuck on a specific yeah. time. Tom Paris a, likes it. A digital time piece that's stuck on a specific time when the bomb goes off. There's a few reasons why that doesn't make sense in my head. A digital time piece is electricity. It would be destroyed and would not show the time. Well... The the technology that they're using isn't necessarily going to create an EMP field. So I don't... Everything else was, like, obliterated. The timepiece is still fully functional. Yeah, but that could be, like, some special timepiece that's, like, made out of some special yes, material yes, or some shit. Special timepiece. The one special timepiece. I don't know. I don't know. right there. Uh, <laughs> it's like the special person right here. Sure. <laughs> I'm the special person. Mr. Doesn't Clean it. <laughs> No. <laughs> Tom Paris and Jane Way go and find some clothes. I don't know how they paid for the clothes. It looks like they swapped their uniforms. Yeah, I don't for know the clothes. It was, it's like they, well, Tom Paris goes up to the shopkeep that has the timepiece that is stuck mm. at the time and it's working now because he's obviously back in time yeah. where it works. And he asks how much it is. They say some random number. It was yeah. like fourteen. And, it, and he also asks him how to read time. And Paris realizes that the next day 
they're going to blow up the planet. Yeah. Um, and we're like, oh, no, not a time thing. I So, once again, Delta Quadrant, New Quadrant, New Aliens, New Species, and what did you think of these particular aliens and or culture? Aren't they just humans? They're just humans. They're just humans. It's like TNG had more variation in its first season in the aliens than Voyager has. And that's really disappointing. Like, I get that this is uh, probably 12 years into fucking the franchise. I know it's about eight years in. Yeah, it's literally just humans. And it's, yeah, it's just humans. They're all wearing variations of the same clothes, of which I'm gathering they just had excess yeah, fabric. They're, they're just like corsets and yeah. like long dresses for and men. A, and apparently, they're not long dresses, they're wearing long shirts. They're wearing like mini skirts. And they're wearing girdles, like all of them. They're all corsets, them. they're not girdles. Like, either way, they're holding in some stomach. And I'm just like, I don't, what is this choice? Like, it's. It's one of those weird things, like the military, the re- rebels wear exactly the same thing. No, sorry, no, the no. military wear grey, but everyone else wears the same thing. And it's just a bit like, there is nothing about this that I find interesting. I'm not feeling anything for these no. people. Uh, I sort of get why first season's aura is a bit hard when they do shit like this. Uh, which just seems, it just seems like a budget saving thing. Like this. Yeah, I feel like it was a budget saving thing. Because it's like, oh, uh, this is like third episode in. Like, they're not going to spend very much money on it because obviously, like, they've only just gone past the pilot, so they don't even know if it's a real thing yet. Maybe it, it was just like, this is a throwaway yeah. episode that they just put in. So, Bellana and Harry are trying to figure out how to contact Janeway. They get, they, they, they go, we can penetrate the fractals with this and we can communicate. Uh, Kes, Kes obviously wants to join the away mission because she can sense things. She has feelings. She cries at their deaths. Yeah, she goes to the um, doctor, asks for help for seeing shit, where she yeah. thinks she, she she honestly thought she was mentally ill. And the doctor doesn't get told anything, so he just goes, eh, I don't know. You could be good, you could be bad. I don't yeah. care. Turn me off when you leave. Uh, and, I like, it's fine, but it's like, I feel like Janeway's really letting down the team if she's not doing that. Yeah. Um, it's... It's a weird thing. But, yeah, Kes gets nothing. They just seem befuddled at the Doctor. And so when they're developing the way to co- go down to the planet and go to Fractal and they have to penetrate it through, uh, it turns out that it works. They can get through, but Janeway and that aren't there. I think they just leave. Oh, no, they find their, their communicator badges that are melted and they're, they're just like, you know, yeah, in a room. And then we see that uh, Janeway and that, when they went to the power station to figure out what went wrong, they got into a fight with the military and the rebels kidnapped them and think they're spies. Uh, and then the see, kids- this, this is the point that I, I want to make about this. Like when they find those communicator channels, or the badges, they, they're like, oh, are they dead? Are they not dead? And I'm sitting there going, even if this was the first time I'm watching Voyager, First time, first third episode I've ever watched, there is no fucking way I'm thinking that A, the captain's dead, mm. or B, the most interesting character's dead as well. If, if you, during the TNG era, definitely. There's no way the main cast would die. And like, I'm sitting there um, going, why, why, why are they trying to build up this fake tension that yeah, it's, obviously it's not going to work? It, like, it, it, it doesn't just, exist. I, like, they're trying to build up this sort of big disaster and this big thing and you want to feel for these people and they try to use the kid as like a surrogate to understand these people but he's just a little bit annoying uh and then Dennis the Menace character so they hear Chakotay trying to communicate with Janeway and the kid pretty much confirms that he thinks they're spies or demons or whatever and so they take the communicators away and leave them on the desk and that's why they were there yeah um and it's just, it's just a lot of back and forth. Also, the way that they get caught by these people is just like, they're just like going to the power station and there's a rally. Yeah, they're, like, they're, they're, they're just, just get turning up and there's a rally. Yeah, and Janeway gets smacked across the head with a baton. To be fair, it's a, it was a pretty good smack in the head. Uh, Tom Paris, uh, I think it's shot there or later. No, no, no. He, he, he kicked the, the fucking police officer's ass. No, but I'm talking in that initial thing. Did he no, get shot? No, no, no. 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 I, see, this is this is how confusing the episode was because it was just sort of the same three set pieces. So, 
they are they move up their plans because Janeway and Tom Paris are there. They've moved up their plans. They need to do whatever they're going to do right, like within an hour. Uh, so they go head to the power station. They try to use Janeway to sort of say, "We're here to look at the power station," and they go, "If you don't do this, we will kill the kid." Yeah, Janeway doesn't do it because she doesn't want to kill everyone. That um, and also, I think she's also like, "You're all going to die anyway." Yeah. So who well, she she decides after telling Tom not to tell them that she's going to tell them everything, which makes no sense because no one's going to believe her anyway. Yeah, because like she's like, "Fuck it, they're all going to die." Yeah, so they take her along, and Paris gets shot saving the kid. He's such a hero. He is a hero. Um, Can we also just say that, again, Tom Paris, the best character of the episode. Was he? Yeah. He is. He's the most interesting character, again. Um, Sure. He had the most to do. Exactly. It was was a very Tom Paris episode. They don't really seem to know who to focus on, like... They obviously want to make keep the captain prominent, but when they have like like last episode with who was it the last episode they focused on? I think it was Tom Paris. Was it Tom Paris? I think it was Tom Paris. What was he even the episode? I don't even remember. Um, yeah, they kind of become a blur after a while. No, it's not a matter of them being a blur. It's a matter of there's there's a lot in the beginning where they're just sort of samey, very TNG esque videos. So it's sort of, um, episodes. So it's a bit like meh. Yeah. Um. Well, like caretaker, you remember because it's the pilot, but everything after this is just a bit of a blur in itself. So Janeway goes to the power plant, and uh, Kess works out where they're going. She kind of has a bit of a spa with uh, Tuvok about the captain wouldn't go to the go to the source of the explosion. That would be stupid. Blah, blah, blah. And Chad is like, "Well, that's where we're going." Uh, and, and it's sort of added in, I'm gathering for tension between the Marquis and Tuvok and the fact that he's in charge and Janeway's not at the moment. Yeah. I think that's what the idea was. But, but that should be a plot for a whole different episode. Like, that should be a full plot of them dealing with that command. Structure. I feel like what they're trying to do is trying to make that into a, a more season-long arc, but it just doesn't... Yeah. It doesn't ever come to fruition, and it's like, no, well, it's, and nothing ever really happens with it besides like later on. Like, because the biggest, things, the but biggest, not much. The biggest story in the first episode is trying to find another caretaker, and how are this Marquis crew and the Starfleet crew going to get along? And then you just sort of like last, last episode, episode was Balan. Yeah, it was Balan. Yeah. So they focus on that in the last episode, and then this episode, it's not really there. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Um, other than Chakotay and Tuvok getting a bit snippy with each other. But it's not explicitly mentioned or no. anything. Like it's just, so just been snippy. After a while, they so they go to this place. They're going to put some this probe thing uh, to puncture through to contact Janeway. Janeway figures out that it it's probably not what they're doing. It's the it's the probing of the Voyager crew to get her back the course of the explosion. If she wanted to stop the explosion from happening... She had clear line of sight shots at all three of these people from ages away. Like, she's a Starfleet captain. She should have been able to shoot them. Yeah, but, yeah, she, yeah, she, you she, don't know what their, influence, some, you know, like their influence on time is. And it's only later on she discovers that it's actually them and it's their fault. So what we have is Janeway doesn't fire? Is that what is happening? Yeah, no, she doesn't shoot at them at all. She doesn't shoot at them at all. She shoots at the rift being created by the yeah, Voyager she crew. She gets her phaser back because she basically, in in this, like, white ubi thing comes through, proves that this thing is real yeah. and that what's happening is happening. Yeah. So she gets her phaser and she starts shooting at the fa- thing and Kim and Blana increase the power. Yeah, that's which a makes it thing. worse. Um, and then she stops them, obviously, and they f- that resets time. They don't blow up the planet. Uh, yeah, we and go- Tom Paris is just talking about going out with some twins with uh- yeah with with Harry at the beginning. So we're back to the beginning of the episode. Jamie there. They see a planet pre warp civilization. It's completely fine, no issues. Uh, we have. Harry and Tom talking about dating the Delaney sisters. We find out Harry's got a girlfriend back home. Uh, a girlfriend. He pines after her for a while and then consistently dates bad people for the rest of the series. 
And again, a girlfriend. Yeah, Kev comes in. She goes, oh, show me the plant. And oh, the people are alive. She sort of smiles and walks off. And everyone's just a bit like, okay, if we say something, yes. they just think she's a bit crazy. Yeah, she comes off as a bit crazy. Yeah, it did, but and I and as, as I said before, she comes across as Deanna Troy in this episode. Yeah, last episode I was sort of defending her, and this episode is I feel everything, and yeah. she starts crying, and I'm just like, no, she's just so Deanna Troy. It's more about him being wrong. I don't really care whether she's like Deanna Troy. I was right, you were but right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was. I, I, it's not a bad episode. I think there's some really cool costume decisions, particularly with Cash. Like she has what, like the girdle. No, no, Cash. <laughs> when she comes out and like the first bit where she comes out, oh, she's yes. wearing a really cool yeah, uniform. Yeah, Cash's costume looked great, but her wig looked really big. Yeah, it was really like bad. absurdly big. It was on a her bad. Head. It was a bad wig. I also think her crying acting. I was trying to work out whether I was cringy or really good. I was, it was like, like sort no, of that's like proper crying. crying. That's proper yeah. crying. Um, I enjoyed like. There's bits of it. I liked Tom's sort of, I want to save them. I, I don't care about the Prime Directive. We can tell them we can stop it. I liked that. Yeah, like his entire arc is kind of cool. Like, but if Janeway is going to just flip her mind within five minutes, what is the point of that discussion? Yeah. Like, I feel like this would have been better later on in the season when they were running out of ideas than the first couple of episodes. That's the in. kind of vibe I get from it, though. It's like, this was made later on in the yeah. season when they ran out of ideas. And, was, and I'm just like, well, this is the third episode in. We don't want to give them a good episode again. I wonder like, how- We can't give them banger after banger after banger. Yeah. Like, that's just too much. I wonder how many of the Voyager episodes were like a rewritten TNG episodes, especially in that first season. Because it does feel like there's nothing. There's no exploring any characters here. Honestly, I do think a yeah. lot of these episodes are just TNG. There's no exploring any of the characters, really. Like, maybe Kess a little. Tom Paris, for sure. He's probably um, the only character in the entire... Well, fucking- Tom, Tom's the coolest. Yeah, he's like, the only character that gets any development. Funnily enough, in the beginning, if you watch Caretaking, which is the last episode, the best characters aren't the captain or the commander. The best characters are Balana. They're Harry. They're Tom. Yeah, they're, they're the, the best characters. So they're like the, the characters that shouldn't even be there. Well, the, the characters that should be more background, whereas, like, Jane, like, obviously, Kate Mulgrew is brilliant, um, and Robert Beltran is Robert Beltran, who plays um, Chicote. Yes, I, I know who plays Chicote. I don't know why. Um, but, like, I feel like in the beginning, they're focusing on the lower crew, and it actually feel it's fun to watch them. I think Harry and Tom's relationship is fun to watch. Yeah. I think Balana is good to watch. Um, I think Kes is okay. I like last episode she was really good. This episode she was I think that it, it was the story that led her down. Yeah, I think it was the script than anything else. I, I think um, it was the script. Like I having think- Neelix there in what, the third story going, I don't fucking know. Why yeah, are you I there, know, Neelix? <laughs> Why are you there? Um but other than that, like, do you have any other thoughts on this episode? Yeah, it's a total meh episode. The one thing that really confused me as well is the guns that the Rebels people had looked like normal guns. Yeah, they look like 007 guns. Yeah, they just looked like normal guns. I was like, oh, that's very odd. And it yeah. just stuck out to me. I was like, they're just silver 007 guns. Yeah, it was, it was a weird one. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say my final thoughts were it's a bit of a meh. Like, it's okay. But it's nothing hugely, amazingly special. Yeah, but hopefully next week's is better. Because I, I forgot all. I don't even know what next week's episode is. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see him in a dress next week, make sure to write dress in the comments. Um, <laughs> that's for the, the other thing. That's not for this channel. No, it, it is for this channel. No. You're not doing the OnlyFans yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's thank- not happening. <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll see you next time uh, at some point in the week by myself where the videos are more peaceful and I don't have to put up with this shit. Thank you very much. Anything? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. That's this entire episode. It's okay. nothing. Why do I waste my time watching this episode? <sighs> episode three should have been skipped. Watching shit is important. <laughs>